do masks work and what's the science that supports it? I will say masks work if you are talking about reducing exposure to the virus, reducing the amount that gets into the air if someone happens to be affected, infected, reducing transmission, reducing cases. In that case, masks work. Now, if, you're, if your threshold for masks work means that they eliminate all chance of transmission, then you know I can't guarantee that. But there is an overwhelming amount of evidence from laboratory studies, epidemiological studies, um, kind of mechanistic fundamental physics understanding that masks do block, do filter out the virus and they prevent a lot of it from getting, if you're wearing a mask, you're worried about breathing in the virus from the air around you, the mask is going to trap or filter out or otherwise block a lot of the virus that you would otherwise breathe in. It may not be 100%, but you know, I'll take a 90% reduction over nothing. So starting with something like this that I wore through the whole first part of the pandemic, is it good for anything? It, it's better than nothing. Um, you know, I'd say maybe a, a cloth mask could offer anywhere from low single digit percentage to maybe 50-ish percent ability to filter out particles of the air that is passing through it. So the mask serves two purposes, really. It you know protects you, so it filters out particles that you might be breathing in from the air around you. And if you happen to be infected, it protects others because it also filters things on the way out. It does a little bit better on the way out just because of differences in velocity of the airflow approaching it. And because of the humidity, um, that keeps those respiratory particles a little bigger on their way out, so a little easier to trap. The other thing the mask does is it really, you know, we talked about somebody smoking and that respiratory plume or jet that's coming out of their mouth. The mask just physically kind of blocks that and makes it dissipate more to the side so it doesn't travel as far. So if you're standing in front of someone talking with them, that mask is going to mean instead of my exhaled breath going straight into their face, it's not going to go as far. It's kind of going to kind of trickle out to the side or go a little bit you know, kind of halfway there maybe, but it just doesn't have that same momentum as if uh, there were no mask. Um, and this isn't just your feeling, there's there's uh, experimental evidence to support this. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've, you know, I've read lots of studies, lots of laboratories have done this, my own laboratory has done this. We set up uh, two mannequins, little foam heads inside a, a chamber in our laboratory. We, um, kind of simulated respiratory particles being generated from one of the mannequins. We used a medical nebulizer, the same that you might use to deliver asthma medication to someone. And we kind of ran some tubing in through one of the foam head's mouths. So we drilled, you know, po poked a hole in there. So one of the mannequins was exhaling these particles and those are similar in size to what people really emit. And then we had the opposite mannequin with a uh, hole in its mouth also where we put uh, some tubing that connected to our instrument that can measure these very tiny particles. And then we tried putting a mask on one of the mannequins or the other one or both of them. We looked at different types of masks and we know that we were able, you know, with masks, we saw a reduction in the amount of particles that were breathed in by the, the opposite mannequin.